welcome back to another episode of Ladies in Red. Phoebe here with Kristen and Sydney. And um, so on today's episode, we're going to just continue the conversation about mental health um, and specifically with athletes. Last week, we had a really awesome uh, guest who talked about just the different um, parts of psychology that is behind sports and just the benefit of really um, strengthening your mind as well as your body. So we just really wanted to expand on that topic. It's such a big part of sports. Um, you have the training aspect of it, obviously physical and practice and stuff, but then you also have the mental part and the psychology of playing a sport and um, making sure your brain is in the right place and your mind's in the right place. So we're just gonna kind of continue this conversation and uh, see where it goes. Yeah, if you didn't listen to last episode with Professor Ford, she offered a lot of great insight um, about mental health and um, especially us three as athletes, um, just dealing with mental health on the field and ways to set goals um, without stressing yourself out or dealing with performance anxiety. I think it was super helpful. And I think she um, is obviously very knowledgeable, but it's um, definitely a beneficial episode to listen to just because we all deal with it. And um, she offered a lot of great advice. So I'm excited to continue talking about um, this idea and talking about mental health initiatives for athletes. Yeah, it was really interesting to hear something from like a professional's perspective um, and have her on just kind of talk about how mental health awareness has become more of like the, like more and more people are talking about and coming out with like things that they have to deal with, which I think is allowing for other athletes to have to like, or to feel more comfortable talking about. Yeah. And I think that in the past two years um, or even decade or so that Um, the mental side of sports has really come to um, realization. A lot of people are kind of seeing that effect um, before back, back in the day, century ago, like hundreds of years ago, where it was just like for fun, for physical activity. And now it has just become so, so much more that it really does have a lot of um, pressure on one's mental state and stuff like that. And that's why we're seeing all these big, um, these big initiatives for athletes just to bring awareness to mental health and to remind everyone that it is totally normal and that it is a part of the game is um, to keep your health mentally uh, stable. Um, so there actually is a Big Ten mental health and wellness cabinet um, that started in um, May 2020 as just like a like another initiative. This was an initiative to just really bring it kind of to light so everyone can see and that this um, this con- they held a Big Ten conference. And that's where this cabinet was launched. And it was just representatives from very um, high institutions. Big 10, as we know, is like a very um, high level of sports. Um, So it's really cool to see them kind of taking um, initiative with this kind of conference and program. Yeah, I actually found this out um, because one of my best friends plays field hockey at Northwestern. So this is kind of how I knew about this. And she, is a representative for the cabinet, which is really awesome. Um, And I know that they don't have like just one person per team. They do have a couple, which is really nice. And I know she said that you can kind of get as involved as you want, but they do do some great things. And one thing that she had said is like, they provide unlimited access to Calm, which is like the number one mental health fitness app um, for all Big Ten student athletes, uh, coaches, members of the university athletic departments and Big Ten conference staff. which, you know, helps with individuals experiencing lower stress, less anxiety, um, improved focus and more restful sleep. I think this is really awesome. And we have seen this a lot, especially with um, D1 institutions who do have the funds to, um, you know, hire sports psychologists and really um, use them as much as possible. And they're just there as a resource. And um, I think obviously for D3, it's not as much like as, funded as like a d1 school but you see that this is becoming more and more common it's something as simple as an app helping um student athletes is super beneficial yeah and i know like personally the calm app has actually showed up like on my instagram feed or like facebook um and stuff like that it's like oh like download calm for better sleep i think it is it's the one that always shows up So I don't know, maybe I'll try it and see if it like helps or something, but that's interesting that that's like an app that the big 10 is kind of like providing their student athletes. And I think that's a really good thing for us because we have to deal with like classwork, lift, um, uh, practices and games. So I think having something like that, and then in addition to having like a sports psychologist or like a professional, like professor Ford, um, 
always being there to talk to like that I feel like that just makes your experience much better yeah, and just look at how technology has helped with that like there's an app now like obviously that wasn't um, available like 50 years ago so we really are seeing these um, this progress with technology and different things I know I have a friend that she plays field hockey at a division one school and they have this like bracelet that they call it so it's but it's called they wear this bracelet like all the time when they're training and it tracks like their how much sleep they're getting like I guess it's based on their heart rate and then like also like how many calories they're burning and stuff like that so that and like it sounds a little like oh my gosh like big brothery like when you say it that way but it's really beneficial because um her coach can see like oh maybe she was up studying last night and like didn't get a lot of sleep and I remember her telling me that like there was one day at practice her coach saw her and I guess like knew the staff that like she didn't really get that much sleep and could notice that she was kind of lagging and she said hey like why don't you go home and like get some rest and like rest up for tomorrow and like that just is beneficial for her body like it wasn't worth it to like drag her body through which was obviously tired it was better to rest and like that technology kind of kept her coach on the same page um with that and then she was able to just like refuel her body and be able to be like in the best shape she could be so I think that's a really cool thing that we're starting to see um just because the mental side of it as we've said is just so important so and sleep is a big part of that like this calm map and that situation like you just have to really take care of yourself first if you want to be the best yeah I think um a lot of this comes down to like sports psychology being like a science it's obviously a science and you know you go to the trainer when you're injured and um, I think in the past few years, mental health has become one of those things that it's like you're injured. It's not treated as though you're um, like, it's something you should hide. And I think that's something Professor Ford really emphasized last week's episode, um, just that it is like an injury. You go to the training room for an injury and you go there um, when you need help. So I think sports psychology has just become way more um, acceptable. And I know that um, there's an association for applied sports psychology, which is a mental health resource or service for athletes. Um, and I know that it's just, a, like I said, a really awesome resource and kind of normalizes um, those mental health services. Yeah, and I know like on that website too said that like there's a search engine that's designed to help you find certified mental performance consultant near you, which makes it like we've just talked about more normalized and easy to access. Um, and just knowing that there are those people around you who are willing to help you um, with like, your practices, how you're currently doing and like balancing it with schoolwork and stuff, I think is really important. Um, and like Professor Ford said, just trying to find a way to separate, you know, like competing and practicing and then like your social life and your friends and your schoolwork, I think that's also really important and obviously affects how we are as student athletes. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that as well. Yeah, you're one of the busiest type of people on campus, like when you think about it and I feel like it's always been a thing on our team and I'm sure other teams um, that like when you get the field, like you, you turn on field hockey mode and it's like, you're there for field hockey and, and it's hard. It's hard to kind of block out the test you took today or maybe the grade you got back or what's happening in your social life. Like it is hard to do. And that takes a toll on you being able to compartmentalize and like be able to manage that mentally. Like it takes a toll. And I think there was a stigma that like athletes, shouldn't be complaining like they are so lucky to be doing this and all this stuff but we're just like everyone else but when you put a lot of things on your plate and you have to compartmentalize and switch mindsets quickly and give your all to many different things like that takes a toll and that's totally normal and I think that that's why we're starting to see that like we see that the normalization um and decreasing of that stigma and I think once we just get over that stigma and just very much accept that it is very much a part of the game then I think that that's when we're going to start to see more people being comfortable to talk about it yeah and I think there's like two degrees to this there's obviously people who um you know just get stressed out and anxious and they're not um they're not necessarily diagnosed with a mental health disorder but um you know they're just stressed out and like they can't really get their head in the right space before they step on the field or they just have a lot going on but then there's also this other side of the spectrum um I know like a University of North Texas study found that 20% of like 6,000 NCAA athletes uh, were experiencing clinical depression in a survey. And I think that's kind of crazy just that we always think that athletes have to be so mentally tough and have to push everything down. And like, there are people with actual um, 
not that the others aren't, don't have actual problems, but these people do have like a diagnosed disorder that they're dealing with. And it is as if they have like a severe injury. And I think um, it's crazy that uh, NCAA athletes have to deal with this. And I know we talked about this with Professor Ford, like how would you treat uh, um, an athlete with a recurring mental condition? And I think um, she offered great insight on that, you know, just like really just using your resources and finding ways to cope with this situation. I think it was super helpful. Yeah, and also like it's 6,000 NCAA athletes, but there are probably like many more of people who are too afraid to come forward and talk about it um, potentially. So I think it's important to kind of like break that stigma around how athletes have to be super tough all the time. And like kind of once you get to the field, forget about what you did at school or like if you had a bad game, like kind of just let it go in the past. But obviously that's super hard to do, which I'm sure doesn't help necessarily and may help or may contribute to this. Yeah. And obviously there's different levels of um, like there's a difference between being stressed and like having an anxiety disorder or um, being diagnosed with a mental illness. Like I think the comparison of treating it like a physical um, injury is just such a good like simile metaphor, whatever, because I kind of think of it as like being stressed and anxious is similar to like your body being sore because your brain is working and like, yeah, you're not going to really necessarily take off a bunch of days because you're sore you know that that's kind of good because anxiety just like a little bit you know you get nerves that's totally normal that's a part of the thrill so like that part like your body being sore you know that like that's okay but then if you have on the other end like you like break a bone or pull a muscle that's a little bit more severe and you treat it like you would um depending on how severe and like everybody everybody gets a little soreness everybody gets a little anxious totally normal and even the larger injuries unfortunately are common um so same thing goes for the um the mental health as well so I just really like that comparison um and I think that if we just keep pushing that kind of storyline and like that narrative of those like words comparing it I think more people will kind of break that stigma and feel comfortable to talk about it yeah I think this is has always been an issue, mental health, but I think even in the past year with the pandemic, um, it's just become such a big thing because, you know, sitting in your house for months on end with no one is obviously not good for your mental health. And especially in sports, I know for me, when I came back to Dickinson in February, I was honestly just like so anxious to play field hockey again. I was like, oh my gosh, I have not picked up my stick in so long. And it's almost unexplainable because you should feel grateful that you get to be back excited. But there was a part of me that was like, I'm honestly like, have so much performance anxiety because like I have not played in so long like there's just this part of me that I've kind of left and it's like kind of that sense of loss of an identity um you know over the past year you kind of lost that and now you're just kind of thrown back into everything and I think um definitely the things that Professor Ford brought up were really helpful just about like setting goals for yourself and not not just setting goals to be ambitious but setting goals to actually like that are achievable and that will help you in the long run. And that definitely had helped me this semester too. And I'm sure Kristen can speak about that, especially because her season was cut in the end and then kind of being thrown back and not really knowing you're going to have a season. It's just that like kind of sends you into like a mental wreck, I think for lack of better words. Yeah. I was going to bring that up too. So I like how you talk about kind of this like lost sense of identity because it is like what we've known, even in the off season, like, I'm your guys' off season is probably not the same as it is normally. Um, and so I think like that, just that change is going to affect athletes um, obviously a lot differently. And I know like being a spring sport athlete, like our games this past weekend were canceled and just like not knowing when we're going to play next necessarily, like having a solid date is like, it's frustrating. And it's also like, I don't know. It's, it causes you to kind of be like, Oh, like, are we ever going to play them? Like that kind of thing. But, um, I think just like you said, like short-term smaller goals, like, okay, like we'll take, we'll take this one week at a time. Like if we play the game, we play a game, we'll make it up in the end if we don't. And I think that's really important. And it's definitely changed our team's mindset as a whole. And I think it's allowed us to play at a better level. And now it's time for our spoon sponsorship. Um, So why cut your portions down? When you're hungry, you want something that is filling and delicious, right? Well, Spoons Cafe believes in cutting the chemicals, not the portions. 
Located at 57 West Pomfret Street in downtown Carlisle, Spoons offers great sandwiches, salads, and soups that are tasty, good for you, and will fill you right up. Stop cutting down the size of your lunch and instead get a delicious lunch today at Spoons Cafe. Open six days a week, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Spoons is the perfect spot to enjoy a great tasting lunch today. Yeah, I feel like the pandemic has just affected everyone's mental um, sports and not sports, just not being able to watch sports, not being able to play sports. And I think it also gave us a lot of time. I think we talked about it in other episodes, just like so much time, like we couldn't physically train together. So we started kind of working on our, our mental health a little bit. I feel like we were doing bonding and we were um, having these conversations and stuff like that because there wasn't much that we could do. So we kind of did that. So I think that's a good, a good thing that we did with our time, a good use of our time and in the right direction um, for sure. And I think that we're just gonna keep being just, I just keep thinking like, like when Cindy, you were talking about like the performance anxiety, like imagine how much pressure like kids are, like kids are now. Like I remember behind being in so much pressure in high school because like I wanted to be recruited and I wanted to be able to go to college. And like now these kids are getting recruited so young that like that's being instilled in their minds at such a young age. So like, I can't even imagine. I feel like it's just getting uber competitive by the year. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like you said, I can't even have like the thought of like, re- like recruiting to play in college right now is just like so beyond me. because it's so long ago, yeah. but I just remember how stressful that was like going to like tournaments so that like your parents are paying thousands of dollars for you to be there. You might as well have fun, yeah. but it was like almost like you could not have fun because you're just so stressed out and you're like, I have no idea. Like, if this is even worth it like what's gonna happen yeah I just think like junior year was like the most stressful time of my life and that was why but like you said like even younger kids now like I know like for some sports there's like eighth graders are being scouted like how are you good how do you know if an eighth grader is going to be able to play at your level when you're in five years it's just beyond me but yeah definitely and I think it's we talked about this before you know just like parents not putting as much pressure on their kids to play sports and um obviously like sports are so important and you know, I think they do have benefits and I love playing a college sport, but I think also like everything will work out. Like, even if your kid's not recruited in eighth grade, like they'll still probably be recruited, like not putting that pressure on them because those pressures and anxieties will follow them. If they feel that way, they're going to feel like they have to succeed all the time. And then when they don't, it'll um, feel like failure. Yeah, no. And like, I've talked about it with my coach before, like just how he's currently going about recruiting and it's literally through like videos over this past year because they haven't been able to go and physically watch in person so that's more stressful too because you can't really I don't know you can see some things I feel like with players over videos but I feel like you have to be more in person to like really see it um and Sid that what you mentioned before about um people being looked at in like eighth grade I remember being at a softball camp um in high school and I was talking to this one girl and she was talking about her friend's little sister was in seventh grade and committed to play softball at Michigan. And I was like, okay, like what happens if she were to get hurt or something or like, I don't know, not be able to perform at the same level. And it's like in seventh grade, you're competing against yes, like very good athletes, but at the same time, like still those people who are just playing for fun. So it's like, it's stressful in that now that person's going to have to live up to this expectation and continue to compete at the same level. And I think that's just going to add more stress on to them, but yeah, I don't know where they're, if they're still going there, but it's interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. That's so young. And like, just to think of also like when I was in seventh grade, I didn't even know like what I wanted to major in or anything. Like you never know, like that school might not have the major, might not have the best program because like, college sports are awesome and they give you so so much but in the long run like after college very very few athletes continue on playing that sport um so I think that that's lost and everyone's like so hyped up with the sports which is like so valid like I was we all were like just like in high school like like, sports were such such a big deal and then you get to college and you were like rewarded you finally got there and like it feels so good to yes play that sport but then also be able to do other things and like I don't know I feel like that just that sense of identity is something that like we'll always be athletes like no matter what happens um if we play sports after college or not we gain that like identity but it's a lot of pressure to keep that up 
Yeah, I know. We talked about um, Victoria Garrick before, and I know she posts a mm-hmm. lot about like that identity crisis. Like when you stop playing your sport, because, you know, it's been your whole life, your entire life. That's all you've done, devoted so much time to it. And I think like one way is just like being in like, obviously for D1, D, even D2, even us, D3, it's still hard to be involved in so many other things, but like trying your best to be involved in other things and find other passions, like being passionate about your majors super important because that's what's going to follow you after graduation like I love field hockey but I'm not going to play in in a year this sport will probably mean mean not that much to me as it does right now which is sad but that's just the way it is and I think one important thing is just finding other things that you value rather than just your sport and being more involved in other things and um, I don't think that necessarily takes away from playing your sport but I think it also helps with mental health because you are exposed to other things and you don't feel like you're losing yourself when you stop playing your sport. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And even like you can find ways to still be involved even after like you're done playing or after graduation, stuff like that. Like it's easy to do that, but I do think it's important, like you said, to find other things outside of your sport, you know, like you can make different friends um, and stuff like that, which I think is just important for mental health. Yeah, and I think about how like, at least for me and I think, probably for many other athletes too, like playing that sport was a sense of like an outlet and a place that you could kind of like let off steam or just like let off some energy and like get some serotonin and like stuff like that. And like, obviously you can still exercise that does a similar factor, but it's just not the same. So that in between, like when you're done playing the sport, you're like, okay, what do I do now? Like I'm missing that outlet. Like you have to find that thing and hopefully rely on like, maybe you took up like a certain thing while you were an athlete that like you kind of fall back on but I think that's why it's important too to like try other things because you're gonna I'm facing that soon like Kristen I'm sure you too like soon we're gonna be in the real world even said like in the near future sadly we're not gonna be able to like lean on our sports you know yeah definitely and I think that's one thing I love about being a d3 athlete is um you just have so many more opportunities to be involved in so many other things and I think that um that's obviously one of the reasons why I went D3, but you know, I think it's really beneficial. And I think even at Dickinson, they, our coaches do encourage us to be involved in other things, not just our sport, have other friends, you know, make other connections. So that's definitely one thing that's helped my mental health is finding other um, outlets rather than just my sport. And my sport is still an outlet, but I think other things to help to be an outlet from my sport. Yeah. And I know like, I've also been able to do the equestrian team on campus like in the fall and like I wouldn't be able to do that if I were to play like a D1 or D2 level so it's nice just like having something else to do on campus or like being involved in something else because at the end of the day like once we graduate and once we stop playing like we're just going to have our teammates and some really good memories from the season but like we'll always have them as like social support, um, whenever you need help, like you can obviously reach out to them, but it's like you, the memories you share with them. And I think that's something that we've talked about a lot um, throughout the podcast. And I think that's just like what contributes to stronger mental health is just having that strong support system from not only your teammates, but like the friends that you make outside of um, your sport as well. Yeah, most definitely. Definitely the, the backhand, like, yes, maybe playing sports adds a lot of pressure to us and really kind of takes a toll on our mind sometimes but the other side then you have these great um these great support system of players coaches trainers all of that um that are able to support you and be able to help you so as you can see there's definitely a lot of um access to bettering ourselves bettering our mind and stuff like that it's just a matter of more people adapting that um, that narrative that we need to treat our minds the same as we treat our bodies because it's kind of both are big parts of playing a sport. Yeah, so this is definitely a heavy topic and we could honestly talk about it for a while, um, but I think we're going to wrap it up here. I feel like we really hit the spots um, that we wanted to uh, as a follow up for our interview um last week like we said if you didn't uh listen in to that one with professor ford definitely give it a listen um she gives it a just a different perspective from more of the sciencey psychology side of um what kind of goes on in our minds and how that affects sports so um we thank you guys for tuning in again to another episode of ladies in red and we look forward to talking with you soon mm-hmm.